Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Scorcher Toys at Anymoon.com's review of the Caliber Wings 172 scale VF1 Valkyrie diecast model. Today we're looking at both the standard VF1S Fokker and the convention exclusive Farewell Big Brother variant. The convention exclusive was limited to 300 pieces debuting at San Diego Comic Con in July 2019. The regular release hit shelves shortly thereafter and is limited to 1500 pieces. I scored both of mine from Big Bad Toy Store and if you're interested, hit the link in the comments below and search for Robotech to do the same. Hitting that campaign link also helps this channel out, so head on over to Big Bad Toy Store. The regular release version of this model comes in a beautiful box with a holographic effect and a magnetic flip top lid that allows you to enjoy the model without breaking the remove before flight seal on top or bottom. The convention exclusive model comes in the same package but rendered in less flashy grayscale. Pulling the trays out of the box you'll find the model as well as a gun, a seated pilot figure, a standing pilot figure with base, four TV style missiles, three closed landing gear doors, two landing gear doors for the rear landing gear when they're open, and behind the tray you'll find a red resealable pouch also marked remove before flight that contains the instructions. Does this diecast fighter mode only model transform? No, no it doesn't. Can I show you how it compares to a Bandai or Hasegawa 172 scale model? No. I don't make models, I barely have time to play with my toys, so I won't be doing that. But here's how it stacks up against the 172 scale KC collectible VF1. The VF1 is supposed to be much smaller than a Tomcat, so here you can see how that plays out with the previously released Caliber Wings Fokker themed F14. If you're more familiar with the Yamato V2 or Arcadia VF1, that toy is 24 centimeters long and weighs 190 grams, so 18 grams less than this much smaller model. And the gun on this thing is a huge chunk of metal too, so plugging that in brings the weight up to 242 grams. So you're dealing with some nice heft here. The toy comes with the landing gear already installed. Here you can see them. You can see there's nice detail, silver paint on the strut, black rubber tires. There's a tow bar that's not articulated in the front. To complete the look, you're gonna wanna grab your little bay doors for the back, and you can see there's a slot and a peg, and you're just gonna press in, and it will seat nicely into position. And now it looks like it's supposed to in the back, and there you can see Back landing gear also nicely detailed, a little oil wash applied to all of those parts. You can also take the gun, which you can see has a little bit of paint wear on mine already. But you just take it, press in, and you can see from the side, no problem with clearance at all. That gun is not gonna drag on the ground. It fits very nicely into place. And it's also, all of these things, very firmly in place, nothing rattle, very solid construction. Now we can also take a look at the painted on detail, which is fantastic, nice, very legible writing, even though it's tiny on numerous spots on the model. Your Jolly Rogers, not crooked, everything looking good there. We even have some nice painted detail inside the cockpit. You can see right in the front, we have a plastic HUD piece also right above that display. And then there's even painted detail on the sides. You do have a pilot figure that just sits right in. So we can continue to complete the look. The feet are very rubbery and it is a tight fit. So you gotta kind of wiggle jiggle. And there you go. And then you can press that back in and it will seat nicely into position. And this model also gives you the ability to open and close the wings and you only need to use one. They will work symmetrically with each other, which is a nice little touch. And you may have noticed that there are hard points on the bottom of the wing, but they're not very uh, sophisticated hard points, just a hole that receives the peg from the missiles. Now you only get TV style missiles, but they do offer you the ability to unpeg the missile. And there you can see not much showing, so it would make a good display on its own. And it is a secure enough fit that when you put it back on, it's not going to be popping off on you. Unfortunately, the hard point on the bottom of the wing is not a very secure point. So I can press this in, I can get it to stay on there, but if I touch it at all, it's going to fall right off. So I've already heard people saying that they've taken to sanding the little pegs, but it's a teeny tiny peg. So that seems like a very frightening endeavor to me. So what I would say is you're better off if you can get them to fit like I can, oops, 
then just put them into position and forget about them. You don't want to have, you, you don't need to have it so you can whoosh this thing around and be jostling it. You're never going to transform this because it's non-transformable. So you don't have to worry about locking them in so tight. It's a model. Just put it on and put it down and you are good to go. And now since it's just a round peg, if I close the wings right now, I could go through and twist all of these missiles forward. Again, they're not gonna stay on very well, but I can do that, press them back on, everything is all right, good enough for a static display. These models also come with a little standing pilot figure and a little metal plate that you can see I've put the feet into, and then that figure stands up nicely and can add to your diorama. So you're whooshing your model around like it's a toy, which you probably shouldn't be doing, but whatever, it's cool. Uh, then you decide, wait, this thing should be just full on flying. I don't need landing gear. So what you're gonna do is just pull those landing gear right out. And not much trouble there. And then you're gonna take the covers and just go ahead and install them. Now the front cover does install pretty flush, so removing it can be a little tricky. You can usually apply a little bit of pressure in the back to pop the front up, and that will help you out. And you're gonna take these other doors. I should say that we can go ahead and unplug these now too, obviously. Get those out of the way, put this in, and the one from the other side, and then you're ready to fly it around. Now, unfortunately, if you'll recall from my description of what comes bundled with this, there was no display stand. So you now have, that should see this a little bit better than that. Let's see here. And there you can see the missile. As soon as I touched it, it fell off. Uh, and this is not going particularly well. So let's get that into position and push down. Okay. So those are now on there pretty good. They're not gonna fall off. The missiles on the other hand, if I touch them will. But you have no display stand. No display stand came with this. You can see, touch the other missile and it fell off. So what are you gonna do? You're gonna need to grab a separate display stand you already own, like a flight pose display stand, or purchase the caliber wings sold separately router style display stand. And while we're doing this, and this is a nice, you know, let's just get this off to make it look nice and symmetrical. There you can see, very sleek profile, a little bit of a blunted nose, but no big deal. The intake fans way set back, and even in the back, the turbines in the back, way set deep, unlike you would find on most toys, much more realistic to actual fighter jets. On the left, we have the Farewell Big Brother version, which isn't that the worst title to an episode ever? I'm talking about the spoiler alert, jeez. Anywho, there are bullet holes. There is smoky, sooty weathering. It looks like a Queed Loon Rao just shot it all up. And that's exactly what they were going for. So that's great. Unfortunately, what you might notice as I move this toy around, many of the bullet holes are on one piece of film. And that film has a little bit of a glossy finish to it, while the toy has a nice matte finish to it. And so what happens is you can see the film connecting all the bullet holes under certain lighting conditions. So that, that's a big bummer and it's unfortunate. So, you know, in most lighting situations, a little bit of distance, it's not gonna be that noticeable, but you are gonna notice it up close. And once you do notice it, it's probably gonna be pretty hard not to see it every time you pick up the toy so that i should say model so that's a bit of a bummer now one cool macabre but legit a little added detail there is blood spatter on the back of the seat from the episode the part that always throws me off is there's actually never a shot of the bloody seat there's just the guys who are going to maintain the vf1 being like oh but everyone seems to remember seeing the bloody seat. So there's your Robotech or Macross mystery for the day. Here you can see some weathering underneath. You can also see the way that this toy accomplishes such great line art uh, facsimile 
is by doing the things that only anime could do with a transforming design, and that's shrinking the arms to be incredibly slender and tight to the body. And then also this fat, thick, wide head tucked up underneath. So all of that is like it should be, but wouldn't really bode well if this thing were going to transform, right? Now, something to watch as you handle the toy, don't press down on the guns. They are very thin little guns and you do not want to break them. If you're okay with a fighter mode only VF1 and don't mind the relatively small size or the lack of a display stand, then there's nothing here that should scare you from buying it. This is a better fighter mode presentation than you'd get with something like the kit's concept toy, and you'd have to be a skilled modeler to make any kit look this good. Most modelers would also tell you that this level of finish would be worth a lot more than $130. However, if you're more a person that appreciates the engineering of transforming vehicles, then the fact that this is priced similarly or greater to the kit's concept toy is good reason to question how you should spend your money. Check out the full article on anymoon.com, smack that subscribe button, and thanks for watching.